People from this region are pastoralists, so they make a living by herding and trading goats and cows. Without water, there are no crops or grasses for the animals to feed on. When the animals die, with them go jobs, income and hope. Even if it started to rain at this point, it would all be too late, as the sudden rainfall would cause many of the animals to catch pneumonia and die anyway. The next day, we were introduced to Kole and his family. At first, he seemed agitated, but it was clear he wanted to tell us his story. As we talked, he told me that last month, his two young sons had died from malnutrition. They were just seven and nine years old. He then led me out to the grave of his seven-year-old son. It's just so unfair. Well, uh, mom. It was hard to know what to say or do, but I promised Kole that when I got home, I would tell everyone about his story. Despite everything the family and their community was going through, I sensed an undercurrent of hope. Kole was working hard to find food and water for his surviving children and the rest of the community welcomed us so warmly. So today we didn't even get to where we were planning on getting to because we saw this community by the side of the road, if you could call it a road, and decided to talk to them and get into their lives a little bit and find out about their experiences. And it's been brilliant. And they've invited us into their lives, into their world. And uh, they're just such a great bunch of people. The day after, there had been some rain which had caused some shallow valleys to fill up with water. However, it rains so infrequently that there are no systems in place to contain the water when it does rain. World Vision wanted to take me to an irrigation scheme it had helped to fund, which was making all the difference to the people who lived there. But first, we had to get there. OK, so the word on the street is that we've got to cross that river. Now, I don't know what you think about that, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> slowly, whilst trying not to panic. <laughs> We've had to leave the jeeps behind because the rains have turned the road that we'd usually use into swamps. Now we're going to have to walk one kilometre through the swamps to get to the irrigation project. <laughs> We've done a couple of miles or so now. It wasn't the kilometre that we were told. And oh, it's just mud everywhere. So I hope we can make it. This is pretty much unpassable territory. There's snakes in the trees, there's probably crocodiles in the water, there's uh, a lot of mud, and we haven't brought our wellies. <laughs> After an afternoon of walking through thick mud, we were unable to go any further and decided to try again another day. In the meantime, we stopped at a borehole that World Vision had helped to fund, which was providing a much needed supply of clean water for the people who lived nearby. It's just one of the many ways that World Vision is working with the community to find solutions to the problems here caused by the drought. But others are not so fortunate, and during a drought are forced to rely on food which is donated from other countries around the world. 
This warehouse we visited belongs to World Vision and the food inside has been donated by the World Food Programme. The food here will feed more than 60,000 people, but within a week this warehouse will have been emptied and then refilled. We had the chance to see this food being distributed in the community. Each family receives a month's supply of rice, beans and maize, which helps to supplement the small amounts of food they are able to buy and grow themselves. The next day, we finally made it to the irrigation system that we'd tried to reach a few days before. It was worth the wait. This is the River Tarkwell, and this is what feeds the Nanye irrigation scheme. We're at the gate right now that lets one of the uh, water ports in, which irrigates the entire system that they've created here. Now, this has been dug out by hand, everything that you can see over here, by some very hard-working people. We soon saw how much good this simple irrigation system is doing. The crops nearby were green and watered, the animals had enough to drink, people had jobs, food and security. It showed clearly how something as straightforward as digging some water channels could make such a massive difference to the life of a community. It was amazing to see that just 30 miles away from where Kole lived, thousands of people had been helped by a simple solution. We'd met people who were facing almost insurmountable odds, but with help from World Vision, these communities were also seeing real signs of a future full of recovery and hope. It's been an amazing experience working up here in North Kenya with the people of Takana. It really has. Go on. Go on. Gotta go. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.